very nice to be here. Uh, and as it's also uh, nice to be frightened because uh, I think it's, uh, you should always try to talk about something you never spoken about before. So I checked out the, the shorter old Oxford dictionary, you know, this heavy one. To create, it means to originate, to innovate, and God was the creator. It's, it's, so it's big, <laughs> right? It's really big, these things. And of course, it really means also that you would like to uh, put into the word create uh, a lot of, of fantastic possibilities. You see, the creator, right? Hmm. So, um, why did cats stop breeding? Um, Actually, some people try to breed cats in a very professional animal house. You know, this intensive care unit like modern designed uh, animal houses in modern universities. And this was a really, you know, they had the animals, the mice, the rats, and they had these beautiful rooms, sterile, hygienic, lights, everything like that. No kittens were produced, no way. Was it something with food? No, it was perfect. They were all vitaminized. No, nothing. And actually, it, they only sort of came to do it when they talked to some of these ladies who have cats, you know, a lot of cats. You can read them in, in, in the newspapers. Cat mothers or aunts, you know. And because they said, no, 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 OK. And so what did they have to do? Well, they actually had to take these rooms and hang curtains down, put in boxes, turn over chairs, strange things, okay, dark corners. Then the cats started to breed. Okay? Which means to me mind means very well that actually if you try to create something in a rational way uh, of that kind, you'll fail. Okay? Actually there are cities, there are countries around the world, which I wouldn't like to quote now, which are doing this. They stop actually the cats stop from breeding. So my point is merely it's extremely easy to inhibit creativity. It's difficult to optimize the support. Uh, uh, it's almost like you said, an enzymatic system where you put in a heavy metal and it stops. Okay. It's very easy to stop creativity. Okay. It's very easy to stop creativity. Um, so if you think of it from the point of view of, of universities, and I was asked to, to uh, talk about universities and the challenges for this, most people say that to be academic is, is nice. An academic is said to be, come from a shepherd academic living in a special place, okay? Now, we had this Swedish author, Lars Jölenstein, who was a professor at the Karolinska, actually, uh, who was an anarchist by heart, who actually became a, a Nobel Foundation president. And actually, he actually found out, of course, that academic in Greek means above the people. So be uh, an academic person would be a very suspicious kind of guy, someone who's separated from uh, uh, the people. And, I, and most and modern universities has to be in it. And I would just say that if you live like that about the people, uh, that normally means that you are, a university will lose out. It will surely lose out. It will not be creative. It will not function in any way, okay? So there is actually um, a situation where it's very important to protect chaos. And when I was the president of this place, I, I met with some other guys who were sort of white chancellors and like. And the guy came from, from uh, Cambridge, which is uh, really a very nice place from the point of view of, of, of doing interesting things. He said, what are you doing? I said, hello. He said, My major task is to protect chaos. OK? Actually, trying to defend uh, what you would call creativity against enemies, okay? And there's a lot of enemies out there in the universities or in the society who believe that they can actually rule and structure the games, right? There are leaders that believe in centralized activities, that things should be controlled, you know, in a way like this. You have the wrongly recruited administrators, they are really toxic are really toxic. Uh, if you should hire, when I'm, you know, as I tell you, if you're going to hire administrators to an organization, you should ask them, why do you come here? Why do you want to? And the answer to actually would allow you to recruitment isn't, I love what you're doing. 
is a Karolinska, I love medicine, I love research, okay? Uh, because if you recruit one who thinks that scientists are a pain in the neck <laughs> because they do all kinds of strange things and you cannot put them in a sort of computerized little form, right? You should get ahead out of these people, right? Very, very, very bad. Very, very, very bad. Uh, there was a, a lawyer, there was a situation in another government agency where they said, we can never get anything done. It's legally impossible. And then I checked, what, what, who's the lawyer? It's that guy. Get rid of the guy. Get in another guy. They got another guy who thought every time oh, we have this situation, nice, we, I'll tell you how to solve it. Okay. Okay. Moving, okay? The Bologna Protocol. Very bad. <laughs> very, very bad. They believe that you could streamline individuals, give format courses, things like that. Very, very bad. So all of this work against the individual freedom and central intelligence doesn't exist. Don't believe in that, okay? I mean, it's not. It doesn't exist. So to protect it, you say, well, you know, one has to create, I think, a simple supportive environment, actually. A vision and mission should be sort of simple, giving the sort of the borders, and that everything is permissible. Otherwise, okay, move. Introduce incitements, positive ways of incitement, okay? Allow free competition. You will be approached by other university vice and said, let's divide the cake. Uppsala takes this piece, Karolinska takes this piece, they are foods. <laughs> there is no cake to divide. The cake is all over the world, right? And you just have to go for the cake or the cakes or create the cake. There is nothing to divide. Local competition is extremely efficient. Sometimes they said, ah, you should only have one of these or one of these. No, 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 no. You could say, let's say, the truck company is gone, young Volvo, example. It's the most fearful positive competition is the local competition. It's my experience, for sure. And eliminate restrictions. Try to eliminate restrictions, always. Things that can help, help creativity. Very hot emotional discussions. England has a very good, I was there in, in the 60s, the, the, they had pubs, right? The guys came in there after the Friday afternoon, they started to drink. Professor of Physiology told us, a professor of chemistry, you're a complete fool, an idiot. Axotl, the salamanders are like this, they could tell you are right or wrong. On the Monday, the professor of chemistry came in, fuming at the lab, I'm going to show that idiot that he was wrong. And then they did very interesting experiments. You s introduce an element of lateral thinking when you have this very, it's no doubt about that. Daydreaming does the same. Daydreaming actually is a very efficient way of releasing creativity. If you're sick, it's not bad. I mean, certain diseases are bad, but some diseases are pretty good. Little bit of fever, you know, could actually move things. <laughs> Kierkegaard's truth or the paradox is, I think, is a very useful one. You think it is like this, then you say, okay, let's do the op think the opposite. And it's surprisingly frequent that that gives you a creative solution, okay? Do new daring things, and failing is okay, and have fun, right? I really fun. And social meetings, cinnamon buns, humor. Sounds ridiculous, but they function in many, many ways. Creative strategy is crucial, I think. You have to understand society and you have to understand primate behavior. We are primates, we are chimps in essence, okay? Um, I'll give an example, for instance. I, had, I gave a talk once about the problems of the old chimp male because for the first time on earth that we're living, I, I feel that to be old doesn't mean that you're wise because the speed of technology is such that it jumps, okay? A country like Japan has a lot of problems because new technology, they had old presidents of companies, but the new technology is coming so fast that, of course, they don't know about that. And the whole society is tuned up to, to obey, uh, you know, this, not seniority, but seniority, right? Hmm. You have actually to help the young people to go, because it turns out that chimpanzees actually like we, and I can give you some examples, we, a young and old, 
chimp male have difficulties to learn from jungle chimps. Okay, they cannot learn. An old chimp cannot learn from a, a jungle chimp. Okay, there's some very nice behavioral studies on that. Okay, and I and some when I was a student, I recognized that my professor was an old chimp male. Mm. <laughs> Don't ask for permission. Uh, informative Dan, being a chancellor here, it was the most efficient way to handle the Swedish government. Okay, <laughs> yeah. you have to no because you know think of it. If you go there and ask permission to the minister of education. It goes to the civil servant, the civil servant had to go up and argue with the minister that you should be allowed. Okay? Difficult process. You come instead and say that you have an informal job done. The civil servant has to go up to the minister and say that you've done wrong. Uh-uh. They normally don't do that. <laughs> Within 90 days, according to the practicing of Sicilian law almost, you are now accepted. It has been true, right? So don't ask for permission. Informal job done. How to make a decision maker take a right decision this is also one. That is actually, I've been involved in that many times. Um, it's actually to talk about what you would like to be done, tell stories that they like, and suddenly, if they're good stories, they believe that they have made the, the, the stories and the, the decisions, and you know, suddenly they decide. Okay? It happened several times. That at the day, and of course, they should get the glory. But that's one way of doing it. And if you're in a leadership position and sitting there, and they will ask you, let's say, um, my, when I was a rector here in discussion, uh, what, what do you think, Hans, initially? And I knew perfectly what I was thinking. I said, I don't really know. <laughs> Shit, this is difficult. I don't really know. And then let the this, because if one would have said, and I said, uh, I think what to do like that, primate behavior, everyone, there would be silence and there would be a lot of, you would lower the creativity level, okay? So, things like that. The most important thing for, let's say, this kind of, of moving in a, in, a, in, a, in a university is to actually have the decentralized authorities. And the most important thing, also again, for the challenges here, is to be able to take rapid decisions. I mean, birds fly rapidly through rooms. And if you don't have it in the decentralized situation, you have created such a situation that they feel empowered to move. No. If that goes, so they have to go to the professor, to the prefect, to the rector, to the dean, blah, 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 blah. The bird, you know, is in Spain. Okay? Has left. Okay? No, no. And one should have the power to support serendipity. Okay? Really to support serendipity. Because you never know, you never know in this kind of leadership, where things come up and you, you have to support it. You really should support it. There is this kind of interesting change. And I so this is another one which I think a bit from the point of view of what I thought introduced, that a research student who can't tell his or her grandmother what they're doing, they don't know what they're doing. And actually, is, what, is this, what is the deeper sense of this one with regard to the Chinese University? It merely means Money is out there, power is out there. They could be, let's say, scientists at a dinner talking to someone. And if they cannot tell and think of it in the ordinary way what they're doing, um, they, 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 they actually will fail. And one situation, I once wrote a book and actually writing about immunology. I'm an immunologist, the fantastic immune system, blah, blah, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, I was using cartoons. Okay? Donald Duck cartoons. And it was considered actually by other Professor Kalinska to actually not be serious. I mean, you shouldn't do that. Science is too serious. You should be electrical microscope, micro molecular biology, this kind of thing. It actually functions extremely well. Okay? And that is part of, let's say, that going back to the academos, that in the society part, unless we can communicate and talk, be creative and talk to the people in the way that people understand, we will lose out. A universe which does, scientists don't, we can only talk in, when I go to the YAC3 subs part and it goes to the STAT4 pathway and you know I'm studying actually the thousand kinase or AP21, what? They will know, understand nothing. They will understand, they, yes, 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 yes. And you wouldn't get support, you wouldn't get excitement, you have to create excitement. So that's not boring. I, so I would say, in actually, sort of situations, the basic assumption for running 
your life in this situation is that you, I mean, you should follow, follow your morale. That the right moral overrules stupid laws. Okay? I mean, and, and if, you know, I, I think live like that. That's really good. You win. Okay? Sometimes you have to go into interesting discussions and being challenged, right? But this is the thing. If you believe the opposite, bye bye. Okay? Then you go to pot. But, uh, if you believe in stupid laws and wouldn't follow right morale, okay, you should leave this room, right? So in, an intelligent disobedience should be encouraged. It should definitely be encouraged, okay? Otherwise, let's say, you would not be able to change things, okay? So that's my message. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you.